Can you believe it? We're already at the end of week two. Our first full week was this week, and we're so excited to see the students learning online and in person. So we just want to, um, again, welcome everybody back, and thank you so much for working with us as we have all kinds of new protocols in place, but we're just so proud of our staff and our students and our families for making this possible. Here at Mason City Schools, we have a protocol for contact tracing, and so I want to walk you through what that protocol looks like so you know what to expect. When we have a first-hand account of a positive case, we go through a protocol, and the protocol looks like this. We have nurses that quickly go into action and identify any students that would fit the definition of a close contact to the person who had the positive case. So they'll go through seating charts, they'll go through the lunchroom. We have all of our students assigned to seats in the lunchroom. We'll go through even our cameras to make sure that we're looking closely to see what the distancing looks like, not only in the lunchroom, but also in our classrooms to make sure that we're being thoughtful and identifying all students that are within that six foot um, distance for 15 minutes or more. So that's what it looks like in our schools. Now we have all kinds of protocols that we have in place to help us with this. Not only are we gonna be looking at all those seating charts and tracking, but we also have proactive protocols. So it's one-way hallways. It's having our teachers moving our students so that they are six feet apart as much as possible. It's taking those breaks outside. It's making sure like in our athletic teams, for example, I know our football team has nine minute intervals. So they're, no, they're not keeping kids together in large groups for any longer than nine minutes. And so they're moving kids um, apart from each other. So it's a lot of proactive protocols. Now that won't solve everything because it's not a perfect science, but the more proactive we can be and thoughtful will help all of us stay in school. So that's the process. Now, once we have those identified, we'll also communicate with you. So if your student would fit that definition of uh, needing to be quarantined because of that close contact, we will contact you immediately, our nurses or our school administrators, and we'll also send a message to that classroom. And then each week, we'll continue to make sure we're very transparent with our numbers and sending that out to all of our families so that you can see exactly what we're seeing. Now, once you do have um, a close contact or a positive case, Warren County um, Health Department also steps in and they assign a contact tracer to you and your family. So they'll work directly with you at that point in time to help you and they'll check in with you on a regular basis to make sure that you are ready to return after that 14 day period of time. As you have heard us talk all along and as we've planned since the spring, our goal is to be learning together in person or online. So we want to continue the rhythm that we have started already and that's our main goal. Now how are we doing that? We have safety protocols in place as you know and we're also monitoring data. And we're monitoring data daily. So we have actual data dashboards that we look at every day as an executive team and as a leadership team. And we're working with our Warren County Health Department and other experts around the area to make sure that we have a good look at what is the um, local data looking like, but what is also the school data looking like. And as you know, every week we will come out and share that data with you so that you can see exactly what we're seeing. So we'll look at how many cases of quarantine do we actually have. And remember, quarantine is when someone has had some kind of exposure or they've traveled from out of country or out of or specific states. And so those are quarantine cases. It doesn't necessarily mean anyone has any kind of symptoms. It just means that they've had some exposure. Or there are cases called isolation, and those are when students have a positive case or staff has a positive case. So we'll monitor those closely, and we'll continue to share that with you. So when we look at a threshold, what we're really looking at is uh, all of the data together to try to make a comprehensive decision with the context that we have here locally. So it's not just the color of our county specifically, that's one piece of data, but that's not the deciding factor. So we will look at all that data and we'll share that with you very transparently as we continue to move forward. Anytime something like this happens, it's serious here at Mason City Schools. And we take that serious because it's damaging. It's damaging to our culture and our community. It's damaging to individuals here in our school and we want to monitor that closely. So when we see an event like this happen, not only is it disappointing, it's damaging. And it's very concerning for us because we are all about creating a safe and successful environment for our students and our staff. So we are taking clear steps to continue to make sure we strengthen that security with our online and our in-person uh, learning. All students will go to a waiting room prior to entering the class meeting. 
and will need to use their MasonOhioSchools.com email account. This allows the students to verify that they are our students coming into the meeting. Students will not be allowed without a MasonOhioSchools.com email account. Students will not be permitted to change their screen name from their preferred name that is registered in the Home Access Center when entering a class meeting. Any required passcode to enter a Zoom meeting will be only shared with the student's MasonOhioSchools.com email. And finally, students may be asked to briefly turn on their video to authenticate to take attendance in the meeting. If for some reason your family has concerns about video, please connect with your teacher directly. You've probably heard people talking around the country about these anonymous Instagram accounts or other social media um, pieces that are harmful to students and staff and communities. And I just want to hit pause for a second and talk to you just as a father in our community. Um, as a parent myself of four kids, we talk to our kids a lot about behavior that we would hope to see not only in our schools but online. And we talk to them a lot about that because we know that kids are interested and curious about all kinds of things. And I would encourage you as parents to be engaged with your child's activity on their phone. Our kids are on their phones a lot. And when we put our kids onto a cell phone, and we give them that access, they have access to all kinds of things. And that's a wonderful thing in a lot of ways, but it can also be a very dangerous thing. And so as we're looking at these Instagram accounts, what they are, basically, they're sharing gossip. And, and the gossip is becoming hateful. And it's sending messages that are not true, and it's hurting people. And so what we need to do as parents is we need a regular rhythm of checking in with our kids taking a look at what Instagram accounts they're following if they have Instagram. Because if our students are following an Instagram account that's sending hate messages towards our school, that's not healthy. It's not healthy for your child or our school. And so we together, it's okay as parents to check into their social media, check into their text messages, see what's going on. That's our responsibility as parents to help our students, to walk with them and to model with them what healthy behavior looks like on social media. I know social media can be overwhelming. I know that because my wife and I are working through that with our own kids and trying to figure that out. But there's all kinds of great programs that you can use to not only monitor that, but to help you with that. So there's parent controls that you can put on that's something through your, um, your network. So if you have a cell phone plan, you can work with your cell phone provider to look at those. There are some free options but there are also some paid for options. We've looked at our family, we've looked at Circle Go, we've also looked at a program called Bark, and it's about $100 a year, but what it allows you to do is to monitor so that you can come alongside and coach your child as they're learning their way through what it looks like to have a digital footprint or a digital reputation and how they start off strong and do that well together. So please um, join me as parents in our community to work together to help our kids to be safe and successful in person, but also online socially. As we come to the end of week two, I can't tell you how excited and grateful we are here at Mason City Schools for being able to do the impossible. Many people thought it was impossible that we could come back together in the fall and begin to bring students together, whether online or in person but we've been able to do that. And the reason we've been able to do the impossible is because we've come together. We figured it out together as a community and we'll continue to do that. So thank you so much for working with us, for partnering with us to make this possible so that we can create safe and successful learning for all of our students and staff.